Well, standing tall at six foot six, our next guest likes to sit in the emergency exit row on airplanes. However, this man cannot be trusted with the duties that come with it. But when you take the exit row, they come around and they deputize you, a hero. <laughs> Are you willing and able to help in the event of an emergency? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm neither willing nor able to help in the event of an emergency. I, I will lose my mind. Are you kidding me? I took two Xanax to pack for this flight. Okay, you may not want to fly with him, but you definitely want to check him out this Saturday at the legendary Carnegie Hall. Please welcome comedian, actor, writer, Mr. Gary <laughs> Goldman! Oh, wow. That, that, what, a, what a nice intro, would you? Thank you so much for having me on this morning. Let I really appreciate you, it. I'm auditioning to be your hype person, just in case. <laughs> what? I'm being serious. This is not a joke, sir. This is not a joke. So just okay. so you know, I can, be, I can be louder if you want, but they told me I'm too loud, so I have to simmer down a bit. No, I, I, I love the subtlety. I love it. Okay, cool. That was me being subtle. All right, so let's just talk yeah. about you. This is not about me getting a side gig with you. You've performed at all kinds of venues. You started at Nick's Comedy Stop, and now you are at the legendary Carnegie Hall, which is pretty awesome, if you ask me. Um, yeah, um, it's like the first venue that my mother, who's 89 years old, has ever heard of that I'm performing, so that's that's very exciting. It's When it comes right down to it, show business is really this thing to get your mother to look at you and pay attention. I, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I've uh, s since I was a kid, it was always, Mommy, look, look, Mommy, Mommy. That's you show me a kid on a diving board at six years old screaming, Mommy, look, in 14 years, I'll show you a theater major. <laughs> All right, so this Carnegie Hall show is part of the New York Comedy Festival, which is iconic on its own. But you do have a new tour going down, Born on Third Base. I don't know much about sports, but I do know third base is a baseball term, correct? Yes. And yes, you played a, a lot of sports, too, because you talk about it in your show. Like you played different kinds of football, basketball and all that stuff. Does it have anything to do with the title choice? Well, yeah, in a, in a way, it's it's comes from baseball, but really it's about just the opportunities I've had in my life. Even though I, I grew up very poor in New England, mm -hmm. I, I had excellent opportunities because I was a white male growing up in the 1970s, and I was very athletic, so I, I really, I had nothing to do with sort of the position I was born into, and I'm, I'm very grateful and also make it my 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 main article in life is to try and help others stand ups and help people who I, I know you were we were talking on the in the break about how I came out with this special about yeah. my suffering with with the Great Depression. I, yeah. I had depression and so now I I advocate for people with mental illness and I try to share my story to give people some hope and and some ideas as to how they can treat their their mental illness so that that's been i'm very grateful i've had that opportunity we're grateful that the depression is in remish that's how you say it you say the depression is in remish yes. right that's how you say yes, it but exactly this it, is so it, nice that somebody is familiar with my work because i because day. that that blew me away because i i've never seen anything like that like i've never seen wow. anyone show up and talk about mental health depression in that way and still make me laugh and the great depression is one of the most honest and raw comedy specials i've ever seen we have a clip and then oh wow we'll chat Millennials take so much flack from middle-aged men talking about participation trophies. Their argument is, how are they going to learn how to lose? How are they going to learn how to lose? Oh, they'll get some practice. <laughs> are you familiar at all with life? Let me tell you, see, everyone is in stitches. Like, you're going to be in stitches, but then it's also <laughs> eye-opening. And I love the part where your mom had no idea. She's like, look at his pictures as a baby. That, cause, and your picture, <laughs> she's like, but he was always smiling. So you don't know just because someone's smiling yeah. does not mean that they're OK, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I will say, and I don't mean to be glib, there's, there's never been a better time to be mentally ill. There's, there's more treatment. Yeah. There are more people who understand than ever before. And there are more people like me, I guess, who are in a position with a platform who are speaking out about mental illness. And, and I, I just remember when I was younger hearing from people, I remember Terry Bradshaw spoke about it and Jerry West who are uh, athletic stars and they talked about being depressed. And I thought, okay, 
it doesn't matter how successful you get. It's a, it's a biological thing, and I mm -hmm. and I don't feel as guilty about feeling so so lousy with all my blessings. All right. So we also blessed because we get to get a memoir from you, which, by the way, it. It's funny because it's called K through 12, but then I was I was like, do people know that it's not your first book? It is my. <laughs> no, it's not. The Lonely Tree oh. is your first book. All oh, right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yes, I wrote that in second grade, but I was never able to find a, a publisher. This will be my first book that is I, I've worked with a with a publisher and also with an editor. So so it'll be it'll be stronger than than the Lonely Tree, which was was a, a book I wrote about being kind of a, a shy, lonely kid in second grade. It was a Christmas story, but it was it was really, I, I basically just ripped off the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer story and made it about a Christmas tree. Well, guess what? Christmas came early for us because we know <laughs> we're going to be getting K through 12 soon, and then we're going to get to see you at Carnegie Hall. Like, that's just yes. a present we can't even imagine. Everyone, he'll be performing at Carnegie Hall this Saturday at 8 p.m. as part of the New York Comedy Festival. Tickets are available at GaryGullman.com. Please go check it out. You're not going to regret it. You're going to love it. Laugh your heart and your eyes out, everything. You're going to be laughing, crying, just so you know. Yes. As his hype woman, that's what I said. You better go. <laughs> go get it. Tell Miss Shadi oh, I said I hi. It. Don't forget. Let's get that. I, I already did. She's so excited. Ooh. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. I and these, you. this is Hazel and, and Muchacha. Madison. Hi, Mazel. Hi. I, want, I want to read Mazel. The Lonely Tree. <laughs> I really do. If I don't see you, have a great Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thanks, everybody. All right.